This mobility drill is known as frontal cogs, hike and drop. The hike and drop refers primarily to the pelvis. As one side gets to hike up, the other one drops down. And this can be seen when we're walking, running, or doing a whole bunch of athletic movements or just everyday motions. When we transfer weight onto one leg, that weight is being supported by the pelvis, has a tendency to be higher than the foot that we're traveling from. Partly because the foot's dragging behind us slightly, and also just we're shifting our weight off of it and onto this one. So we're going to see a little bit of a lateral tilt, or what we call hike and drop. So we're just going to explore this in terms of gaining more movement. Now it's also an assessment, as you're aware, that will give you to see what is missing in your overall components of motion. But it can also be used as a great mobility drill. So with your feet underneath you, you're going to imagine yourself standing in a very narrow tube. And what you can only do is simply drop down. There's no room for rotation or side bending or anything like that. In essence, we're just going to try and find out what it's like to bend into one knee and will that allow the pelvis to drop on down. And then you can simply come on up, bend into the other knee, get a sense of what that's like. Will that pelvis drop down and come on back up? Now, one side may feel a little bit different than the other, and that's just giving you some good feedback as to the quality of the movement. And what we're going to try and do is balance out both sides so that they're as even as we possibly can get them. So to begin with, once again, we're just going to bend into the knee of one leg while the other stays straight. So they have this opposing relationship. Coming back up to a starting point, we bend into the opposite knee and while the other one straightens. Now, what that's going to do is it will send my pelvis off to the side and my upper body will go off in that direction unless I side bend in the opposite direction that the pelvis is tilting with my rib cage. And then what will also have to happen is my head will need to level out. So it actually is tilting in the same direction that the pelvis is. The rib cage opposes it. And that's the big part of these cog actions. The pelvis and the rib cage opposing each other in motion and the head and the rib cage also doing the same. So the head and the pelvis you'll find throughout many of these cog actions are going to go through the same motion at the same time, even if the head is trying to stay still. So bending into one knee, where does your weight go? Does it go over into that bent knee or can it balance itself over that straight leg while well, this hip drops down? Coming back up, bend into the other knee, allowing that pelvis to drop. Where does the weight go? Is it over that foot or can it get over the straight leg? And this is what we're going to work on accomplishing. Bending one knee and getting the weight to shift over onto that straight leg. Well, what might help is incorporating the arm reach overhead to help drive the rib cage over onto that straight leg side. Bending into this knee, getting the weight to shift over onto the straight leg, raising the arm up to encourage more lateral flexion. Can I keep my head level as I do this motion? Try it for a little bit. It may be hard to coordinate at first, but the more you do it, I have a feeling that the more things are going to become more fluid. But be sure to assess before and after to make sure this is the right movement for you at this time.